Well, it was a uh, great first win. Um, wanted to thank the fans. I thought they were outstanding. We had a great crowd. There was a great energy, great atmosphere in the Sun Bowl, and I uh, felt our players really fed off of that. Uh, as a team, we talked about going into the game, playing with energy and emotion for the entire game. Uh, I think uh, both sides of the ball came out well in the first half. Uh, defensively, we held them to three points in the first half. Offensively, scored 24 points. We started fast. That was one of our uh, goals. Uh, we did have a lull in the third quarter where we gave up two consecutive uh, uh, drives on defense, but uh, fortunately for us, uh, both of those drives, the offense came back and answered. In fact, the offense had three answer drives. We always talk about after score answering, and they did that three times during the game. Uh, as always, we talk about no pre-snap penalties, things that get you in, in trouble before uh, the play starts. We did have two. Uh, we had one flinching the ball by the center, and... Uh, uh, but he was he was pretty good in the game, and then uh, we had one illegal formation, which for all the shift and motioning uh, that we do pre-snap, uh, I really felt that the quarterbacks and the offense handled that for the first game very well. Uh, we always talk about not turning the ball over. That was probably the most disappointing thing in the game. Uh, we put the ball on the ground three times in this game. Uh, fortunately for us, uh, twice our guys were hustling and got on top of those fumbles um, by Aaron Jones, and then. Uh, the young freshman probably made a poor decision bouncing a run play uh, in that point in the game. The game was in hand, and it gave them the opportunity to get back in the game because uh, they picked it up and returned it for a touchdown. So we went back to him later in the game, and he did outstanding. You know, it's a lesson learned for him that you can't turn the ball over and, and be a running back at the Division One level uh, and also probably can't bounce runs. So uh, Quadre is a very talented runner, and he'll continue to get opportunities. Uh, offensively, uh, we talked about getting explosive plays. It was really what we've been searching for. Um, and what we consider explosive plays are runs that are plus 10 yards or more and passes that are plus 20 yards or more. Uh, we had 11 explosive runs of plus 10 yards or more, two of those resulting in touchdowns, 37 yards and 75 yards by Aaron Jones. And then we had four explosive uh, passes over 20 yards, uh, one of those resulting in a touchdown to Cole Freitag. Uh, so all told, we had 15 explosive plays and three touchdowns, which is uh, certainly the most that we've had here uh, since I've been the head coach. Uh, we talked about being in manageable, efficient third downs. We are 11 of 17, 65 percent. Um, if we continue at that clip, that would put us probably at the tops of our league. It's tough to sustain that, but uh, we talked about offensively doing the job on third downs and uh, certainly did that, and then defensively also did a great job on third downs. We talked about catching the catchables. We had one drop the entire game. Uh, that was on a uh, swing pass to Terry Janiel, probably a little behind him, but he did get his hands on it, and uh, uh, I thought the receivers did a nice job. Cole Freitag had the best game, four catches, 95 yards, long of 46 and a touchdown. Uh, he carried out the pickaxe before the game and, and represented that well. Um, we talked about winning on the perimeter as far as blocking and whenever you have a rushing game like we did or a back rushes for 250 yards it's not just the offensive line it's the tight ends it's the fullbacks the wide receivers i thought they did a nice job on the perimeter we talked to zach greenley about being efficient accurate and, and playing with toughness uh probably of all those things the thing that i came out of it with is uh his toughness uh unbeknownst to people he tweaked his knee uh in the first series of the game had to get it retaped, braced, played the entire game with it. Uh, also subluxed his shoulder when he landed on the turf one time and, and kind of mangled his finger on his throwing hand. And, and he completed the game. He had three touchdowns, 229 yards, no interceptions. He took care of the football. Uh, it was a very efficient game for him. Um, and we'll have to check to see his health availability for this week. Um, but uh, I admire his toughness in that game. Um, things that stood out. You know, we had 518 total yards. Time of possession, uh, which is always something that we strive for, was in our favor. 37 minutes, 24 seconds. Uh, I mentioned the three answer drives. Uh, we were 50% for red zone touchdowns. Uh, we kicked a field goal and had two scores when we got down there. Uh, we need touchdowns rather than field goals. We started fast, 24 uh, first half points. And then Aaron Jones, um, you know, what a game he had. Um, 31 carries, 249 yards, 8 yards a carry average, long as 75, and he also had three catches uh, for 43 yards, utilizing him in, in many different ways. So uh, very good day, overall day offensively. 
again, the two negatives uh, that we need to clean up uh, moving forward. I uh, felt we had too many negative plays, and uh, I give a lot of that credit to New Mexico State's defense. Uh, they had a lot of moving parts, a lot of slanting, a lot of blitzing, a lot of things really that they hadn't shown on film, which of course you can expect in a first game. Uh, but we need to clean that up, and then the ball security thing is something that we'll attack heavily uh, this week. Uh, defensively, we talked about giving up minimal explosive, plus 10 runs and uh, plus 20 passes. We had four explosive runs against us and three explosive passes against uh, a team that is a very explosive offense that has really hurt us with explosive plays in the past. Again, that was seven total explosive plays on defense and 15 explosive on offense. If you have that type of uh, variance, you're going to win the game. Uh, we talked about speed option possibly affecting us early like it did in the last couple seasons, and it wasn't a factor really. Uh, in fact, uh, I'll take uh, the quarterback being the leading rusher anytime. Uh, if you take out the quarterback runs, their, their running backs carried it uh, 21 times for 76 yards. So I thought the defense did a nice job overall stopping the run game. Uh, the quarterback did break some containment on third downs and kept plays alive with his legs, but uh, we knew going into the game that he was a good quarterback and, uh, and is mobile. Uh, we did not get any sacks. I thought we had several pressures on the quarterbacks, but we got to start hitting home with hits in sacks. Uh, something, again, we're really going to try to improve upon. I thought the defense was outstanding on third downs. Uh, they were 5 of 15, 33%. Our goal is 35% or better, so we achieved that. Uh, we did not get any turnovers, uh, but we had several uh, uh, contested balls uh, due to hits that ended up being drops by their receivers or tight ends uh, because of the, the physicality of our DBs. I thought the DBs covered well. And I thought they were physical, breaking up balls. We had several pass breakups, but we need to get the football itself. Um, but I felt they played with uh, good fundamentals for the first game. Uh, there was a few missed tackles, uh, none really resulting in big plays, but tacking on a couple, four or five yards, we need to clean that up, and we'll, we'll attack that this week. And uh, again, I, I really was pleased. Uh, the last three years we played New Mexico State, they've kind of rumbled down the field and scored first. Uh, we challenged our guys to start fast, and again, they, they came in with the, you know, they got off the field on the first series and held New Mexico State to three points in the first half. Uh, the other thing is uh, I felt in the third quarter, uh, I don't know if it was a little relaxation or a little bit of fatigue, but uh, again, those two long drives was probably the negative thing. But again, from that point, they bounced back and, and stopped New Mexico State on consecutive drives after that. Uh, as I had mentioned before the game, I really felt the biggest jump that we were going to make as a team this year uh, was special teams, uh, and I thought it was an outstanding day by everybody. Uh, Alan Luna had a 43.8 yard net average, okay? That means there's great coverage going on. There was two downed inside the uh, one yard line, both by Aaron Jones. Uh, we're not afraid to play our best players on special teams, and, and he's outstanding on punt team. Um, and then Kalon Beverly had a, uh, a great cover down tackle for no yards. Uh, the coverage unit was outstanding. Uh, punt return, I think we kind of got a glimpse of what Terry Janiel could do. And then uh, it's kind of amazing. After, after his returns, he's over there shaking his head. He had a 43-yard return, a 20-yard, and he's just shaking his head. He's mad at himself because he didn't take it to the house. I think uh, you will see at some point this kid take it to the house. I think he's got great punt return ability. But... He had a 17.3-yard average. Our goal is 10. All right, that's outstanding. And he feels the ball extremely well. He's got, uh, you know, great judgment. And uh, I think he's going to be a special punt returner for us. Kickoff return, uh, their kicker uh, did a good job of banging it out of the end zone, much like Maddox does. So we really only had one opportunity for a return. We got 26 yards on that. Um, PAT field goal, Maddox was 100%. He had a 23-yard field goal, 100% on his uh, – PAT kicks, and then uh, we didn't get a, a field goal block, uh, which is a goal of ours going into every game. But again, there was good pressure on their kicker, and their kicker and punter are, are very solid there at New Mexico State. We give a top gun award to our top special teams player, and that went to uh, Devin Cockrell, which was good to get him back in the fold, not only on defense, but he also brings physicality to our special teams. Um, he did an outstanding job on kickoff cover, very physical. And uh, kickoff cover... Uh, again, it's been one of our best units, but uh, uh, we always talk about nobody getting past the 20. They had two returns, both inside the 20, and uh, there was a lot of knockdowns, a lot of physicality. It was fun to watch uh, kickoff cover. Um, all in all, it's great to start 1-0. Uh, it's always great to uh, beat your rivals. Uh, 
Uh, I think they're, I told Coach Martin after the game, a very much improved team, uh, in particular defensively. I thought they've really improved their personnel on defense. I think they're doing a great job over there. It's a fun um, rivalry and enjoy competing against them. Uh, now we move on to Texas, uh, which if anybody watched that game last night, probably one of the best college games I've ever witnessed um, from an excitement standpoint. Uh, this is a team that is loaded with talent. Uh, you know, these guys get the, the cream of the crop year in, year out when it comes to players. Um, I'll talk about some of these guys, but they scored 50 points last night versus Notre Dame. They've, they've changed their offensive mentality. They're more of an up-tempo, up multiple spread. they got a new coordinator. They're going to try to rattle off as many plays. I think you saw the tempo in the game. They're, you know, the ball's spotted, and they're lining up, and they're going. Uh, they ran 86 plays against Notre Dame. I'm sure their goal is probably 100 uh, uh, plays a game, and uh, we need to be really on our screws uh, with that. they got 517 yards versus Notre Dame, very balanced, 237 yards rushing, 280 passing. Uh, zero sacks given up. Uh, they were very good in the red zone, six to seven red zone touchdowns, and they were also good on third downs, 44%. They have one turnover, so they're sitting at the same as us right now, minus one on the year. Uh, they used two quarterbacks. Uh, they played a very talented freshman, number 16, and uh, he had a very good game for them. 16 to 26, he had two touchdowns. He did have the one interception, threw some outstanding long balls. Uh, one of those being dropped, he probably could have had another, tack another 100 yards onto his game had that ball been caught, uh, and again, he took no sacks. And then they bring in uh, what they call their 18-wheeler package, and I can see why they call it that. Uh, their, their other quarterback who's been a starter for him in the past, he's 6'4", 250 pounds, and he's, he's a hoss. And uh, they got a nice little red zone package and a, and a running package. They, they didn't throw the ball much with him. He had one, uh, one attempt, but uh, he carried it 13 times for 54 yards on a 4.1 average, and uh, he scored the game-winning touchdown on a spectacular play. Uh, last year, he um, ran for 497 yards as, as their starting quarterback and uh, 6.1 average. So this guy's a threat with the ball in his hands. Uh, both are running backs. I don't know which one you pick you want to go against. One's 249 pounds, one's 252 pounds. Uh, so uh, us tackling high would probably not be a, a good thing. Um, very physical running back. He ran for 131 yards against Notre Dame last night, 5.5 average and a touchdown. And his backup, again, ran for 46 yards, and he's bigger than the starter. Um, very tall, athletic group of receivers. Looking at their three deep, they have seven receivers that are six foot three or taller, okay? Um, I only think we have a six foot three receiver on our team. Um, this number one, Burt, you saw the long ball that he caught, had an opportunity to catch another long ball. He was their second leading receiver last year. This guy's got track speed. Uh, he's 6'3", 190 pounds. He had six catches for 111 yards and a touchdown, long of 72. He was targeted 12 times, so he's their go-to guy. But they've got several other outstanding receivers. Number three, had 25 yards, three catches. Number 13, who's played quarterback for him in the past, very athletic. Uh, he had two catches for 73 yards, long of 68. So they will take chunk opportunities down the field. They have a very athletic offensive line. Uh, that's 6'4", 306 across the board with three returning starters. Uh, and the right guard has 24 career starts, 25 including last night. Uh, they do have a freshman, true high school freshman center that in his first game, I thought he did a, a dang good job uh, against a good Notre Dame defense. So they returned seven starters on offense and uh, defensively, they returned seven of their top 10 leading tacklers from last year. Uh, very experienced, they got their entire starting secondary back, which again, much like the receivers, uh, big and physical, you know, these guys are 6'1", 6'2", 6'1", and uh, they play a lot of man coverage. They give you a lot of multiple looks up front. They'll present odd front looks. They'll pre present even front looks. They'll stem in and out of those to try to create confusion. They pressure quite a bit, um, and they play a lot of high percentage of man coverage. So our, our receivers got to do a good job getting off man coverage and press. Uh, defensively, uh, they have a what they call a Fox position for them. It's more of a hybrid linebacker, defensive end. Uh, number 40 is outstanding. He's got 19 career starts. He had four tackles against Notre Dame. He was their fourth leading tackler last year, and he led their team in sacks. He'll line up as a stand-up linebacker. He'll line up as an outside linebacker. He'll get down as a defensive end in a stance. He's got to be accounted for at all times. I think their middle linebacker is outstanding. Uh, he had six tackles last night, a tackle for loss and a sack. Number 46, Jefferson. Great size, 6'3", 238. Uh, he was Big 12 freshman of the year. 
and he was their second leading tackler last year as a true freshman. Uh, this guy's going to be a uh, NFL uh, star. Uh, they have a very good, uh, strong safety, uh, excuse me, free safety that did not play in the game. Uh, I would anticipate he's going to play against us, but he, had, he led their team in interceptions last year, uh, number 14. And then this little uh, uh, nickelback, number 11, that plays kind of a hybrid linebacker safety. He had four tackles, a sack, and a tackle for loss, uh, P.J. Locke. Uh, Interior-wise, they've got three uh, very large, athletic, explosive, uh, I'll use the term disruptive tackles. Number 93, Boyette, he's 6'3", 317, senior. He had five tackles and tackle for loss against Notre Dame. Number 97, uh, Nelson, 6'1", 300. He led their team in tackles, and he had uh, a tackle for loss. He had eight tackles yesterday. And this other guy, Puna Ford, 5'11", 303. Uh, they're very compact, they're very uh, thick and explosive. And uh, as I mentioned, the corner, number nine, and the corner, number five, both of them are 6'2", and they both were uh, all Big 12 uh, players last year, and their free safety is 6'3", so their entire secondary is 6'2", or better. Uh, they got great length, they got great speed, and allows them to play a lot of man coverage. Um, last night against Notre Dame, again, they, they did give up 47 points, um, 44 444 yards, 206 rushing, 238 passing. Uh, Notre Dame had the advantage in time of possession. Uh, they had three sacks against Notre Dame. They get after the quarterback extremely well. And Notre Dame's got some very athletic quarterbacks, so the fact that they got three sacks against them uh, was very impressive. And again, they were good in third downs, 44%, and red zone scoring. Uh, they did not get any turnovers in that game, um, much like we did. Special teams-wise, their punter, had a 55-yard average last night, 64 long, and he got one inside the 20, so they have a talented punter. Their kicker is a grad transfer from uh, LSU. Uh, he had one field goal in the game. He did have one PAT block that was returned uh, by Notre Dame. Their punt returner, number 11, Warwick, 5'11", um, 173-pound receiver. He had three for 30, 10-yard average. That's probably what most teams' goal is, 10-yard average, so they have an outstanding punt returner. And then uh, kickoff return, uh, the guy that did it for him last year, number two, who had a 20.6 average, the guy that returned last night was a true freshman running back with explosive ability, 5'9", uh, 208 pounds, number 21. So uh, these guys got athletes across the board offensively, defensively. They're an experienced team. Uh, they've implemented a system on offense that's very difficult to defend, and they have the talent to run it defensively. They've got NFL talent across the board. It's going to be an extreme challenge for us. Uh, very exciting for our players to have an opportunity to go play a Big 12 team in front of 100,000 fans uh, at Texas. I know all these kids that played high school football in Texas, uh, you know, they probably dreamed of playing for Texas growing up. Um, unfortunately for our guys, none of them got the opportunity to be recruited by Texas. So um, I know that they're going to be excited to have that opportunity to go play against them. Uh, we're going to approach this game like we do every game. We're going to get prepared. Uh, we're going to try to play fundamentally sound, and we're going to try to play our hearts out. And, uh, and fight for the minor fans, and, and, and that's our mentality going into this game. And uh, that'll be our mentality going into every game. Any questions? I don't mind kids getting fired up, you know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with getting fired up. There's nothing wrong with showing emotion, playing with emotion. Uh, you just can't let it control you, you know? Once the game starts and you get a couple hits in you, all that's out the window anyways. You gotta execute. You got to block, you got to tackle, you got to catch, you got to communicate. Uh, so that's what we try to do. We could try to get prepared the best we can. If you're prepared well and you go out and play your hearts out and, uh, and you don't win, you know, I can live with that. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can compare it to a lot of guys, but, uh, uh, you know, again, it, these guys, you know, they, they get top five recruiting classes. You, you could go down every position and name NFL guys on this team, uh, every position. Uh, skill guys, lineman-wise, uh, it's, it's a loaded team. Uh, Coach Strong has done a great job recruiting since he's been there. Uh, you know, he's been in that program. Uh, I admire what he's done there. You know, he had, a, he had a difficult chore. He had to eliminate some guys from the program. He had to get his culture the way that he wanted it, and I think he has that now. You can see how they played last night with great energy. They've all bought in. Um, so. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be a difficult chore for us. We understand that. Um, and uh, matchup-wise, we, we don't match up with them 
uh, across the board. You know, there may be some individual matchups that, that we like in our favor, uh, but all in all, you know, when you look at matchups, it, it, it tilts heavily in their favor. Yeah, that's going to be our offense, and, and regardless if we're playing on the road or regardless if we're playing at home or the opponent, um, you know, that's, that's what the minor fans are going to see. And it does cause confusion. It does cause uh, defensive misalignments and those type things. And uh, I thought we were very clean with it in the first game. And Coach Pease does a great job. You know, I, I use the term demanding. He's on these guys about being perfect with their motions and shifts, the timing of it, which is just as important. And, uh, yeah, you'll continue to see that uh, throughout the year. Well, I knew it was a good game, but I didn't watch it as a fan. I watched it more as, uh, you know, uh, looking at matchups, looking at scheme, uh, looking at, uh, you know, productivity, those things that they were doing. Um, you know, it's tough to watch an opponent and, and sit there, but you do watch it and do appreciate what a great game it was, and it was a great game. Uh, it didn't matter who was playing in that game. Uh, I don't think anybody could argue that that would be an ESPN instant classic like you mentioned. Yeah, they did, and they're, and they're both completely different. And, um, you know, the freshman quarterback's very accurate. He's got a strong arm. Seems to, really, for a true freshman playing Notre Dame in his first game on national TV in front of 100,000, I mean, he handled the pressure. Uh, so he, he's tailor-made to go, you know. Uh, he's a different cat. He's going to be a great player for Texas. I'm sure they're extremely excited about having him as their quarterback for the future. But uh, the big quarterback presents his own problems because uh, with the ball in his hands, he, he's a weapon. You know, he's... 6'4", 250, he can run, uh, he's physical, you know, and that's not an uh, uh, easy chore to, to drag somebody like that down. So we're going to have to be very clean in our tackling. We can't have arm tackles, can't tackle high. Um, you know, we're going to have to be very fundamentally sound against all their backs. Um, so it'll be a challenge. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, we really do spend a lot of time trying to teach our guys how to play the game. Um, we try to teach them situational football, how to react in certain situations, uh, be situationally aware of the different things that are presented in the football game. And I think our players have uh, really started to grasp that. They understand it. Um, again, you do have to be a smart football player out there, and, and you can use that to your advantage. But, um, you know, when we prepare for a team, we assume that they're doing the same things and uh, that they're going to be situationally smart and those type things. All I can control and all our team can control is what we do, and uh, that's what we focus on. And, again, just like this game or any other game, uh, the, the, the game the next week and starting with conference play, uh, my main focus is the UTEP Miners, and uh, we try to get prepared to understand what the other team is doing, uh, but uh, my focus is making sure our team is prepared and ready to go. Yeah, I, I do, and, and I think we probably went through it on an even more dramatic scale as far as, uh, you know, players that we eliminated and those type things and, and uh, getting things the way that we wanted it. And I really feel it's there. I mean, our, our guys work. Uh, they come to work every day. They have a great attitude. I enjoy coaching them. Uh, it's fun. And uh, that first year, that wasn't fun, uh, but it was necessary, and it was done. And, uh, and I think he's gone through that process, and I think if you watched their team last night, they were having fun, and they were all bought in, and, and there was energy. So uh, I think he's accomplished that, and uh, I don't know him personally, but I admire what he's done from afar. Yeah, you know, and, and, the, and the kids got to buy in, which obviously they have there, and they scored 50 points against uh, an outstanding uh, defensive program. Um, so uh, it's all about buying in, you know, just like our kids have bought into Brent Pease's offensive philosophy and they've bought into Tom Mason's defensive philosophy and, and 
Coach Nacken's special teams uh, philosophies with, with Coach Yanowski. So uh, there's been a lot of scheme changes for us, and uh, it's all about the kids buying in, and, and they have. And, and it looks like uh, they've bought in for Texas as well, and uh, that bodes well for them for the future. Uh, you know, we always try to attack the things that we weren't good at. Uh, and again, the things that stood out to me were ball security, uh, offensively, uh, eliminating negative plays, uh, defensively being a little bit cleaner with our tackling and, uh, and, and handling the up-tempo. Uh, New Mexico State was an up-tempo offense, uh, but it uh, looks like Texas even goes at a faster speed and clip. We're going to have to be very good in that. We'll, we'll prepare that way in practice. We'll throw two huddles at the defense the entire time uh, to simulate that and try to up the tempo ourselves. I was, yeah. I ran down the sidelines to call a timeout that one time. I was winded for about a quarter and a half after that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you you know, normally after a play, you got eight to ten seconds. You know, we're a huddle-up team. You catch your breath. You know, When you're going one play after another, especially if they had a big play and you're running 20 yards downfield and they're lined up ready to go for the very next play and you're trying to get the signal from the sidelines, it does, it, it does, it, it gets you a little winded and those type things. That comes down to conditioning, comes down to mental toughness, being able to handle that, being able to concentrate under those conditions. And it also kind of forces you, you can't sub. You know, if they're going up tempo and they don't substitute packages, now if they substitute, which they usually don't when they're doing that, the refs will hold it, you can get your substitutions out there and take your time. But if they're rolling at that clip and they're not substituting, you're, you leave your same packages on the field. And uh, if they have a mismatch, in their advantage, they're not going to substitute and they're going to take advantage of that and try to all the way down the field. So it is difficult to go against. Uh, much like, you know, teams that are up tempo, the last thing they want to see is a team that slows it down and, and keeps the ball away from their offense. So I think a big key in this game offensively, we can't have a bunch of three and outs and let them have that ball and ramble down the field. Um, we got we to gotta control the clock as best we can in this game, more importantly, uh, because of the style of offense. I would think they probably think that. Um, I think probably they, they understand that depth-wise, uh, you know, we don't have the depth of, uh, of the University of Texas, so I'm sure that that's their mentality. But again, I can't speak for their coaches and how they're going to prepare for us. Uh, all I can speak for really is how we would prepare for them and, and how we prepare each week. Well, I wasn't here when we played Texas previously, but, uh, you know, I do understand, you know, having coached in hot, humid environments, you know, in the NFL going down playing in Miami, it, it takes its toll, you know, especially on a team that, you know, from here, you know, it's, we, we see the heat, but we don't see high humidity. And so our guys got to be smart. They got to hydrate throughout the week. They got to take care of their bodies. They got to eat properly. They got to rest properly. And, uh, and they got to do the same during the game. And we're probably going to have to substitute more than we normally do. Uh, during the game. Everybody's probably going to have to play in this game uh, to handle that heat because, again, we don't quite have the depth uh, four deep that, you know, University of Texas has. Uh, I'm going to be dead honest. We, we would probably have to play a perfect game uh, for us to beat this team. And uh, I'm not saying that that can't be done. And I know our kids are going to go out and they're, they're going to give it their all. And uh, uh, I love the way our kids compete. Uh, you know, there's not a single kid in our program that's even probably got a recruiting letter from the University of Texas. So, uh, you know, I know personally we have a lot of competitive kids in our team, and uh, I know they take that personally, and, and uh, they need to come out and play with a chip on their shoulder. Do you think is it coming off of this game with Notre Dame just kind of a trap for them? Do you that uh, I don't know how they view it. Um, I see it as an opportunity for us, a big-time opportunity, and, and uh, that's the way we look at it. And uh, you'll never hear me sit up here and speak for another team or another coach about what they feel about their program. I really don't care about their program. I care about the UTEP Miners, our mentality, and how we're going to play and how we're going to fight. And I do know this, our kids will go up there ready to fight. Anybody got any questions? Thank you.